As a networking and computer guy, I am very rarely fully satisfied with the product. This is an exception. So this is the USW Flex. This is a five port gigabit PoE switch that gets its power from PoE. One of the reasons why it's so unique. This thing is unique and that's why I love it. Every company and their dog makes a 24 port, 48 port, 16 port, 8 port, 5 port, whatever switch you want. PoE non, PoE access points, look at TP-Link, look at Netgear, look at Cisco. Everybody's making almost the same products. Where Ubiquity stands out is with their unique and creative designs and their good ideas for new products. This switch is fantastic. It's one of my favorite switches. I have many of them. Here is just another one that I had upstairs that I just brought down with me. But it just so happens that I needed another one, so I picked a new one up, figured let's unbox it and review it right now. All right, so getting right along into the unboxing. As you can see, we are first presented with the Switch itself. Now the Switch has its own little port protector right here, which is removable. I never use these guys. I pretty much just throw them away because I think they're useless. But looking at the bottom here, we have our five ports. Looking at the front of the Switch, we have our five ports labeled one through five. Port one has a little power icon here. This is our PoE input port. This port sends our data and carries power to the Switch itself. Our other four ports, ports two through five, have a little lightning bolt power icon on them. These ports deliver power to our other devices. Looking at the back of the device, we have a mounting bracket. It just slides right off. You can use this to mount it to a wall or to really anything else for that matter, as well as our little reset button here in the back. It also has some nice rubber padding, so if you're gonna mount this to a desk or just set it on a desk, it's not going anywhere. Also in the box, we have two included zip ties as well as our screws and mollies for mounting into drywall, as well as our pull mount bracket and a little getting started piece of cardboard telling you to essentially just download the app. One thing I forgot to mention about the back plate here, it's magnetic. So talking about PoE on this, this guy can take in up to 60 watts of PoE and then distribute it through its ports. Its PoE output is dependent on the PoE that you send it. You can only send this guy 802.3 AF active PoE, but you can send it different wattages. If you're using simply the PoE injector that comes with a lot of Ubiquiti products, such as the UAPAC Pro, you can power up to 16 watts coming off of this guy. Now, why do I love these switches so much? These guys are fantastic because I can drop them anywhere. All of the ports in my house are PoE, so that makes it really easy to just plug one of these switches in like underneath an entertainment cabinet or when I'm doing a LAN party or testing a network or adding in DMX nodes or access points or whatever needs PoE, it's really easy to deploy one of these guys along with it because I can get more ports and retain my PoE. Ubiquity does also make another product that goes along with these switches, and that is their Flex Utility Kit. Now with the Utility Kit, you also get a 60 watt power injector. And I say injector because it's not your traditional PoE injector. It does not take an ethernet in. This only supplies power. So the only thing running over this ethernet line that it comes with is power. I don't like this because it doesn't have any power terminations. It expects you to terminate your own power, which that's fine, I guess. But at the same time, when you put a switch into this kit, where are you gonna put your extra cables? Where are you gonna put anything else? You can't fit anything aside from the PoE injector, the switch, and a little bit of extra power cable into this guy, making it pretty useless for me. So I typically get those $36 little enclosure boxes off of Amazon and use those. But other accessories aside, let's get into setting up one of these guys. I'm gonna throw this guy down to the side. I'm gonna take this one and bring it some power. Now, as I mentioned, my entire network is PoE, so I'm able to just plug in a single cable to port one and the thing starts to fire up. All right, it's telling me that it's ready for adoption. So I'm gonna go ahead here and plug in a few other devices that we might wanna use. First off, I'm gonna bring out my laptop. Let's also bring out an access point, the UAPAC Pro. As you can see, the light turned red, indicating that it's providing PoE, and the light on here is not active because it is not providing PoE. We don't have to stop there. We can keep plugging in more devices. We had exhausted our PoE budget when using something as big as the Mesh Pro, but I'm still pretty sure that I could plug in another Flex access point 
plugged it in. Let's see, is it negotiating PoE? So I have everything plugged in here. Everything is booting up. We can see two of the PoE lights are on on the switch. You might be having a hard time seeing that on camera, but actually now all three of our PoE lights are on, signifying that we have power going to all three of these devices. We have the Flex HD access point, we have the APAC Pro, and we have the G3 Flex camera, all powered over a single cable. No power lines required, which is fantastic. Just to mention real quick, this guy is being powered off of Ubiquiti's second gen 16 port PoE switch, the one with you know eight ports of PoE and eight ports of not PoE. It's my testing switch, it's what I use for building out all of my networks and for testing and stuff. But if we move into the computer here, into my Unify controller, this is just my testing controller that just runs on this laptop here. We have my switch, which plugs into you know my main network so it can see all the other devices on the network. That's why it says I have 26 clients but we can also see our flex switch here, which is pending adoption. So if we come over here and click on adopt, all right, so we have our switch adopted right here. I am not gonna update the firmware right now because I know for a fact that the updated version of this firmware doesn't really change anything, but we can look at our PoE power consumption and budget right here. It says out of zero watts, but it shows us that we're only using like 10.5 watts. Now it's jumped down to 9.93 watts. Altogether here, we're sitting under what I know our PoE budget is. I know our power budget is 16 watts of PoE, so I don't know why it says out of zero watts, but that's just wrong. We can also come up here and see that this is our main uplink port and our main power in port. We can also see that this is running at 10100 because it's simply just the little camera. We can see our other gigabit ports here, our port that doesn't have PoE going to it that's running to my laptop here locally. But yeah, again, this is a fully managed Ubiquiti switch. So we can come over here and change port settings such as, you know, tagging VLANs, adding in different, you know, profiles. Coming in here to managing profiles, we can add anything that we want really to this guy. Again, this guy is just a managed PoE switch that just happens to get its power from PoE, which is one of the coolest things ever. Nobody is making a product like this, or at least nobody that I've seen. So I am very happy with this. It does not have a temperature sensor. I do wish these guys had a temperature sensor in them. I very often deploy them in attics and use them as mini little industrial switches because up in attics or in crawl spaces or in places where I don't want to run another cable, I might not have power. So these guys are great to deploy up there because I can add in things like access points. One of my most common uses for these guys is when we need an access point somewhere that we can't run another line to or get power to in any other way. If there's already a line running, I can splice that line in the middle, terminate both ends of it, run it through one of these switches, and then also run it out to an access point. Which is another reason why I do typically use the APAC Pros for installations like that, because it has a primary and a secondary port. I can plug in PoE going to it, and then I can send out of that a port on a wall for a computer or something like that. But this is cool for if you need something that already has PoE, something like an IP phone in an office or a small business, anything like that. These switches are fantastic. I have deployed probably 60 of these guys and I have never had one come back to me dead. I did have one die before deployment. It was dead on arrival. So I'm not really gonna fault the product for that because you know, things arriving DOA happens. I'm very happy though it did not die in the field. My other complaint with this guy though, is this lip. This is a very large lip that does make it extremely difficult to get your fingers in here to unplug cables. And I don't like that. So on this guy, I am going to end up carving this guy down, which is a real shame because you know, it's a very clean, very nice switch. This is actually the one out of my bedroom that I use for everything because I do a lot of testing upstairs in my bedroom. So it's nice to be able to have, you know, PoE on this without having to deploy another PoE switch, taking up another outlet, taking up more space. This guy just provides PoE to all of the devices in my room because I have ports built into my desk. But yeah, this is my switch out of my bedroom. I love these guys. I have three of them deployed here at my house. But yeah, this fourth little one here is gonna be going at a small business that I do all the MSP work for. And it's gonna be up in the drop ceiling, powering two access points, an IP phone, and sending networking to a port in the wall. So with this being a managed switch, I can have you know the phone on the voice VLAN while still sending all the VLANs to the access points and controlling the VLAN going to the wall jack where this is also gonna be sending data to. So to recap, for 100 US dollars, this guy can provide power over ethernet to four devices while being powered by PoE. It's a great switch for splicing into existing installations where you just need to expand the network, but you don't wanna run network jacks. I've used these in places where I physically could not run more cabling because the cabling was run when the house or building was built and without ripping out the walls, I would have no way to run new cables. So for installations like that, or just around the home use, honestly, for you know people that are anal like me and want PoE on every port, 
These things are a fantastic value at 100 bucks. They've made my life a hell of a lot easier, and if you're anything like me, I'm sure they'll work for you too. Thank you guys for watching my review of the USW Flex. If you liked this video, leave a like. If you didn't, the other button works too. Drop a comment, let me know what you think. Have you guys used one of these things before? I'm gonna have a link to buy one of these guys down in the description below, as well as, you know, I guess, I could put a link to all this other stuff, I guess, but you know, why not? Thank you guys again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.